Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Starship IFT-4 and also a mission or some missions in the future that SpaceX will be conducting with the U.S. military and what kind of um, recycling they're going to need to do in order to proceed with these missions, because it's a very complex strategy that they're going to be uh, embarking on here. And I guess we're just going to get into it, okay? So in the future, SpaceX will be using Starship with the Department of Defense to transfer cargo and people, anything that they can as far away as they can as fast as possible. So say if something is thousands of miles away, across an ocean, maybe two oceans, who knows? Who knows how far away it is on a little island or something? And the U.S. government, the Department of Defense, needs to transfer cargo there. Like, what if they have to transfer a bunch of relief aid there? Or what if they have to take military supplies there? Well, SpaceX's Starship can handle it. Uh, with its tonnage to low Earth orbit, and also its capacity, its payload capacity, the width of this thing, it's nine meters around. It's huge. It's like the size of your house. Think about how big your house is. Uh, about 30 feet around. That's about it. Nine meters, 30 feet, somewhere around there. That's how much space that uh, the Starship has in it that the U.S. government, Department of Defense, also aid organization could be sending anywhere in the world. Elon says in about an hour or two, they can get something from the United States to wherever in the world in about an hour or two. So that makes that huge, huge upside for the military to use this. They can send cargo, whether it's munitions, whether it's things that they use on the battlefield themselves, um, you know, uh, materials to build things, um, maybe light transfer or light transport vehicles, things of that nature. And they can send it wherever they want to, whenever they want to. So Starship, super important for the Department of Defense. But there's another thing that we have to think about. How do they land these things? Will they have landing pads when they get there? Will the military be able to make some in situ landing pads for Starship? And what do they do with a Starship once it actually lands? Because there's going to be no infrastructure for when they land. It's going to be no tower, no catch arms, no mechazilla, no way to refuel this thing when they get there. Because some of these places are going to be very remote. They're going to be in places that aren't the United States. And ITAR, which is the governing body, basically, uh, it's it's keep your secret a secret, basically. This is a Department of Defense thing. They don't want the enemy to get a hold of this. So they don't want anybody to be involved from outside of the country. Or they don't want anybody to take any part of this starship apart and use it for anything locally. So... Say if you have a starship, you cut it in half, you can make a, you can make a cool little place to, to uh, hang out, to hide. You know, maybe it's a little bunker. Um, that could be something the Department of Defense does. But also, if you think about it, the internal plumbing, anybody outside the United States can't touch it. Um, that's, that's not with the Department of Defense or with the U.S. government. So what do they do in that case? They have this giant 150 foot tall rocket full of stuff and they land it somehow there will be landing gear eventually, you know, there'll be landing legs eventually, I believe. So they're going to use the lunar starship model where they have, uh, where they'll test it with those legs, the similar legs to the lunar model. And they'll land someplace on the earth propulsively. And then what do they do with it when it's there? Uh, in situ fuel it. They don't have the infrastructure there. They can't do it. So they have to rip it apart. And that's where the Department of Defense comes in. That's where the military comes in. They'll take pieces of this thing. They'll take it all apart. It'll be more so recycled than it will be reused at that point. They'll take the engines off. They'll take the Raptors off. They'll take the interior out, take out all the plumbing, take out all the electronics, all the avionics, the black box, everything. Take it out of the Starship because nobody is supposed to get their hands on it from outside of our country. So... I believe that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a long time from now. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think 
the Department of Defense is going to start launching starships to other places around the world. I think it's going to be 10 years from now. It's going to be a while. SpaceX has to make sure that everything works right for the starship to even fly. I mean, as we saw before, IFT2, IFT1, IFT3, it's not even close to doing a full mission yet. SpaceX has about, they want nine missions from Starbase Texas in the next year, in this fiscal in fiscal year, 2024. And five of those missions will be explosively landing in the Indian Ocean. And that's part of the, um, you know, part of the environmental impact study that's been published. So we know that SpaceX is working on Starship. IFT4 is coming up. And they're going to be doing some tests with IFT4. Possibly, uh, you know, there's going to be a transfer, a liquid transfer or a propellant transfer, sorry, um, from the header tank to another tank in Starship. Also, maybe they're going to be doing the payload doors again. We're not sure. Um, Elon said possibly sometime in um, March, April-ish, six weeks ago, about two weeks ago, he said that. So in about a month from now, this is the 2nd of April, so sometime in uh, April, April, May, I'm going to say mid-May, SpaceX will be ready for this next launch. They still have to test the booster. They have to probably do a little bit more testing with the ship. Um, they did some, uh, they did a six-engine static fire, did a single-engine static fire on the ship, and everything seemed to be okay. There were some tiles missing after static fires, and that keeps happening, so they have to fix that. Um, so they're working on that now. They took it back to the production site, putting new tiles on it. And if they lose them during the flight, these first seven flights or so, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just worried that maybe when they're coming back in to the atmosphere, um, they're going to burn up. But uh, IFT4, Elon has said he wants IFT4 to do a full, uh, get, get crispy, as they say in the industry. So he wants it to come all the way back down and get real hot on the way back in on the reentry. So if they can survive that, IFT4 is a success. I would say IFT4 is a success if the booster and the ship hot stage properly, that's a success. And if the booster flips back and does a soft propulsive landing in the Gulf of Mexico, that's a success too. But for the next so, you know, so many ship launches and booster launches, they don't expect to do that. You know, they would love to do it, but they don't expect it any time. And that's part of iterative design is that when you do launch these things, you know that there's a, a pretty big possibility that it's not going to come back in one piece or it's not going to come back at all. But it's, it's not going to be in one piece when it lands and that you may have just a ton of extra starships all over the place, parts of the starship all over the place. So um, we're going to see what happens with IFT4. I, I think it's going to be a success. I hope that it can get through the atmosphere and not burn up and they don't have to do the, um, they don't have to, they don't have to blow it up on its way back in. That's all I'm concerned about is that I really hope this booster does a boost back burn, does some sort of propulsion, even if they don't make it to the landing. I think that would be a win if they get propulsed a little bit. I think that's how you, what did it say? Propulsed. Let's get this booster propulsed people. Uh, back down to the Gulf of Mexico and at least close to the Gulf of Mexico, close to the water would be great. Even if it's 100 feet up, that'd be great. 200 feet up would be great uh, before they have to blow it up. And if um, the ship gets all the way to the Indian Ocean and that's a success and they know that for five of those missions, they, they're they going to blow them up. You know, it's a, it's a concussive explosion in the Indian Ocean. So... It's a red or not red. They're, they're going to uh, make sure that they're in control of it, but they will make sure that it's an overpressure uh, event, so to speak, when they do blow it up in the Indian Ocean, which is going to be spectacular. I really hope we can get some some cams out there. I, like, I don't know where they're exactly where they're aiming for, um, but we have a general idea. And it seems like there's really not any place out there. Maybe they're going to have a barge out there. They're going to have a somebody in a boat with a with a telescope or something uh, filming this thing because it would be great to have some other eyes on it other than the ones that are on the ship itself. But the ones that are on the ship are absolutely beautiful. The The views on the ship are actually beautiful. So we're also going to expect uh, Booster 4 and ship, or not Booster 4, um, the fourth mission's booster and the ship to have cameras all over them. Maybe even better shots than last time because the last ones were absolutely incredible. So let me know what you think in the comments. IFT4, 
You think they're gonna? They think they're gonna land a booster? I don't think so. I think they're gonna get close though. Every time they're gonna get closer and closer, and I think within two more launches, the booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico. So IFT six booster will land. I believe the ship, and this is just speculation on my part, just due to the way that they're progressing. IFT six uh, ship will be able to reorient itself through the atmosphere and get close to a propulsive landing in the Indian Ocean. I, but I think they're still going to blow it up for IFT six. But I think the booster is going to get pretty close, if not do some propulsion near the water in IFT six. So that's about it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate your time and please take a second. And if you like space flight content like this, Starship content, do me a favor, hit the sub button, hit the like button, because not only do you get my content if you do that, um, but you might get other space flight reporters like myself, independent reporters that tell you other things that I didn't tell you. You know, I want you to learn everything that you can about space flight and Starship. So please hit the subscribe button. YouTube's going to feed the out. You're going to feed the algorithm and say that you like Starship content and YouTube is going to obey that and they're going to send you more Starship content in the future. So thanks again for subscribing and liking the video. If you really like this kind of stuff, hit the membership button, join the pod squad and help us fund the next round of videos for this channel. Take care, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one.